Okay, let's start the Magic Movie Studio 2023 suite. You can see it starting up. What a sweet program it is. And so this is the IDE. And of course, we have an advertisement from them. You always get the advertisement. Just uh, It's just part of the game. Just dismiss it and keep going. And you see we can either do a new project or load an existing project. We're going to start a new one. We're going to call it Test. And the movie settings are HDTV, 29.97 frames per second, <clears throat> uh, 1080p. From the projects, you can actually uh, change this to 4K or 8K, whatever you want. Uh, like There's various uh, settings you can use. We're going to use uh, 1080p. That's good enough for this project. So create. And this is the Movie Studio Suite IDE. In the upper right hand corner we have a file explorer where you can import uh, videos. I already have a few videos uh, in this folder. Uh, you can, you know, whatever folder you, you choose, you can you can select from here and, and go looking for, for videos if you like. Uh, so, for instance, I have a couple of pictures. I have a couple of videos that we can look at uh, in just a little bit. Uh, other things, there's effects. There's templates. Uh, audio, and you can load more audio if you'd like. Uh, various songs or whatever from Magics. Uh, there's a store even where you can purchase uh, video clips and various other templates and such. But that's what's in this upper right hand corner. In the left corner, left up upper corner, uh, is our monitor window where we can watch uh, the video playing. And then in the lower section is our timeline. This is where we'll build the video. And you can see there's several clips here, there's or several tracks here. There's nine tracks. If we scroll down, it uh, keeps going down all the way down to 32. Uh, I think you can even add more than that, uh, maybe, you know, 100 or 200, I'm not sure how many, but uh, really if you're using more than like 5 or 6, uh, you're starting to get a little complicated with your videos. So yeah, that's, if, you, if you're if you using that many, you're you're going pretty wild with your videos. So just a few, you most likely just use a few tracks, uh, usually that's good enough for, for most videos. Uh, you know, certainly no more than 10, probably. Alright, so let's uh, take a look at uh, these files. If I click on uh, play on a file it'll show it in the okay, so I have monitor the window why did the cookie go to doctor i'm going to leave you hanging on that question but uh, the uh, so you see there's some other uh, like images we can look at uh, and uh, another video now what uh, we have to do though is this is just viewing uh, files that are on the hard drive if we actually want to build a video, we have to put it into the timeline. So let's grab, drag and drop a video onto the timeline. So I put it on track number two there. And uh, first thing it does is it wants to adjust it to the current project settings, uh, 1080p. This video may have been recorded at a higher resolution or a higher frame rate, like 30 frames a second. A lot of times your cell phone will do that. So just have it adjust to the current uh, settings. Yes, adjust. Okay, so now it's on track number two. And so if we play it, we'll actually be watching uh, a video that's in the timeline. Okay, and so on the left-hand side, you can see there's a, there's a few settings for this track. Uh, we can go to solo mode if you had, if you wanted to, you know, not, instead of watching every track, you could just watch the one. Uh, you can turn a track on and off. Uh, so like if you had several things going, you could turn this one on and off. Uh, you have lock, which uh, would lock the uh, track so it doesn't allow you to edit anymore. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you can unlock it and then, you know, you can edit again. I usually leave them always unlocked. I never worry too much about uh, editing on, on a track. You can make the track bigger, which I usually like uh, making it bigger. And you can see here, you can see the video and the audio tracks on the one track. Uh, or you can make it uh, minimized, make it really small. Uh, maybe if you have a whole lot of tracks, it's good to do that. But uh, I like keeping it on the big side to look at it. There's, of course, some other uh, options up here you can uh, play with. But, uh, you know, 
I'm I'm not going to do that. All right. So anyway, there's that track. And uh, if you look at, there's a few little things we can grab here. If I grab this one, it'll it's a fade in. So if you watch the video now, see it starts with black and it fades in. Uh, you can do the same for fade out over here on the right. I click a little bit before it and it'll fade out. And by the way, this is your scrub bar. Uh, you can scrub across and, and look at your video. I call it a scrub bar, a uh, time bar or whatever. This is your time uh, bar right here that you can click on. You can see it starts at 0 seconds, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Uh, in the bottom, you can zoom in and out. If I zoom in, you can see it goes a little higher, zooming in further and further. Um, if we zoom out, uh, you can see the video clip's really tiny now. The whole 30 seconds is shown right there. So we'll zoom in. You can also use this to zoom in, go all the way down to the one frame if we want to. So now we're looking at each frame of the video. So it's going to be really far out. Or we can go the other way and uh, 10 minutes. See, that's way too far out. So probably 10 seconds is good. One second, somewhere in there, five seconds. But uh, you'll have to figure out what's good for you. But but know that, that sometimes you need to zoom in and out to, to uh, you know, check your video out. You can also scroll left and right. If you grab one side of it, you can expand it or shrink it. So be careful when you grab that uh, that bar. Sometimes uh, it doesn't behave the way you expect. Maybe you know, just make sure you grab the center of it, and then you can scroll left and right. Okay, and then uh, this one will optimize. So if you click it, it should bring it all the way across, and so you'll see the entire video right there. Okay. Besides the the shaders, I mean the the fade ins. Uh, you can actually click the transition button and uh, like so we say fade in for a transition uh, you see what it did it just basically moved the the fade in slider over a little bit for us and uh, there again it does it the same with the uh, if I can grab this uh, the same with the uh, fade out if I click that transition button and do fade out it automatically move it over for us now, of course, um, besides the one uh, option there, there's there's many, many more options. Uh, there's these, of course, but you can see all the transitions, uh, so many to choose from. So if you, uh, you know, you can go crazy with this. Now, I would recommend only using fade in uh, or cut because you you know you start running the risk of making your video unprofessional with all these different weird transitions and that's just kind of you know a little bit i don't know uh this just doesn't seem as professional as as uh, as it should now the way that uh movie studio works is bottom up i think adobe premiere actually works top down but what i mean by bottom up is uh, videos in the tracks below uh overlay tracks above so if i put this video right here and i'm going to expand it so we see both of them and, and if you look at the scrub if i if i scrub here from bottom up it's seeing that video if i move to here from bottom up it's seeing that video and then it's overlaying this video so you don't see this video at all however the audio for both tracks still play so you'll see that both both audio plays and really both videos are playing but you just can't see this video because this one's overlaying it okay so i have to jump so you see how that works from bottom up and well what good is that well there's a few things that you can do with it um let's uh play around with some of these clips a little bit so here's an example now you know what this is doing this is fading in one and fading out the other. Now see this fades to black and this fades from black back up to opaque. So, uh, but really if you want to do a cross dissolve, you want it to do this where you're overlapping one to the other. So while this one's fading out, this one is fading in. And you'll see what happens is one fades out while the other one 
fades in. So you have a cross dissolve that way. So that's how you do that. So fade in and fade out can be used with overlapping, and that'll help you uh, to uh, you know switch from one to the other. The other thing you can do, of course, is uh, our titles, which if you click this button, it'll open the title effect, and uh, you have to select the video you want the title, of course. And then we'll give it a title. Let's call it um, Lighthouse. Oh, for some reason it took that away. Okay, so I have made a title Lighthouse. Probably can't see it because it's so small. Scroll down a little bit and grab the font size and make it something reasonable size. Let's make it 60. Mm. A little hard to select that okay so now that's 60 so you can see from bottom up the title overlays the the video clip and the area around is uh, of course like alpha channel like chroma key and so you only see the text all right so that's how you do that and of course uh, you know you can fade the the title in if you like to do that sometimes that's kind of fun to do so you fade in the title and then you fade out the title that gives it a less uh you know choppy choppy way of doing it i guess you could use the the transition buttons instead either way uh, but that's how you would do that so then bottom up you don't put the title up here because if you put the title up there well what happens is the video overlays the title and you never see the title so you have to put so we're talking well bottom up you have to have it here and so and of course I was messing with the audio on the title there's no audio on it so it didn't do anything oh no that's the fade in okay so yeah you want to be faded all the way in all right okay so that's that and there again you saw that was the fade in I can do the same thing on this video if I grab that button it's the fade in and you can see that uh, gives him like a you know eerie ghost look to him but uh, fade that back out okay and that's different than the audio track the audio there it is uh, for the whole track it starts out with zero that's about uh, average volume and then of course you can get louder or you can get softer all the way down to off but yeah keep it around uh, I don't know sometimes you know one or two higher is good uh, sometimes maybe even six you want to kind of make all your uh, all your clips be about the same uh, volume so so that your video doesn't you know start out soft and then go loud and then go soft and loud you want it all about the same if you can if you can do that so you want to try to keep that uh, that way okay um, let's go over some of these these are uh, undo redo you can hit delete uh, basically you have to select select a, a video and then delete it okay do undo okay then unselect okay you can do title uh the set chapter markers i don't really use those but it just basically puts a flag in that uh, time bar uh so you can you know you can put it in different places uh i guess it's helpful for some people i, I don't use it really okay the next one next to it is set snap markers which there again if you click if you click on a video and, and click the uh, time bar you click snap it'll put a little line there I don't know if you can see that or not but uh, you know that'll help you to to get to that particular spot uh, there again I don't use it um, you know so uh, you can you can use that if you want this next one is uh, you know the magnet is uh, it, it makes you snap to a certain uh, position like for example on this video if I want to put it here of course it'll it's easy to put it there if I want to put it here you can see how it kind of snaps to it and that makes it really handy because if you have that turned off you know and then you try to do it again well you know it doesn't snap it just like and it's really hard to get it close you know how, how do you get it there you just can't almost uh, it's not impossible but it is very hard but if you just snap it makes it really easy to snap to it the uh, group uh, button is uh, where you can if you select uh, hold the shift button down and select a, a few different clips and uh, hit the group then these two will move together where if you ungroup them 
uh, you know, it, it doesn't move together. So you, you have, you can have group or ungroup there. All right, and uh, this one is mouse mode. That's what we're in right now. So if you grab something, it's uh, it's just doing that one object. Uh, if you have uh, this mode, um, which what does it say? Uh, for single track, yeah, it'll just do whatever track you're you're messing with. If you do this one, it'll do multiple tracks. So if you have the scrub bar over a few things and you grab with this one turned on, it'll grab you know everything in, but with that. Okay, and this one is stretch mode, which, um, yeah, I really don't use stretch mode so much, uh, but I think it, like, actually time changes it. So if you stretch, you're actually changing the time, uh, so slowing it down or speeding it up. Uh, so you can do that. Um, but uh, usually when I do uh, that, I, I will do it from the effects menu, which there's a speed effect. Which you can set from from there. That's what I would do instead. Uh, so, but you can just grab it that way and and uh, time stretch it that way. Uh, the cut button uh, is where if you click, you move your scrub bar uh, to a pos position and you hit cut, and it'll actually split the video into or the clip into two clips. And so you can move this one independently, and uh, you know you can move this one independently. So, and why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you want this one to have one volume and maybe you want this one to have another volume or or maybe there's some reason like when you create the title, you want it to be separate where you can move this around if you like. So you can do that. Um, so un unclip that. Okay, and this one, I'm not really sure what it does. I, I haven't really used that. So I don't really have any comments for that one. So, okay, uh, up over here we have uh, like, storyboard mode and uh, scene overview. I really don't use those. Uh, I usually use the timeline. So if you if you click it, you know, then you can move videos into here over storyboard mode. But it's a little hard to do transitions and have complete power or control over your videos. And you can do that really well with the timeline. So that's what I usually do. Um, this one is multicam mode, which I think that's more for like live streaming or something. And, uh, you know, it, it'll, it'll show you like, uh, you know, well, I don't know. It, it, I, I don't, I don't ever use it. So I, I, I just say, just stick with the uh, timeline mode. That's, that's the one to use. This one will just go full screen. If you want to, to see the time, the tracks, uh, you know, as many tracks as you can. And then that puts it back. All right. And so zoom in, zoom out. You can also zoom in, zoom out vertically and, and you know, you can scroll vertically also, scroll horizontally. And if you grab this, you can stretch, you know, the, uh, the scale that you're looking at. Okay, up here is a range bar. So right now there's no range. It's just doing the entire range. If you click on it, uh, you'll get the with your left button, you'll get the left side of the range. And if you click on with the right mouse button, you'll get the right side of the range. And what that does is it's like makes its own uh, range that you can either play or if you export the video, it will actually only export this one range. So maybe that's okay if you want to, uh, you know, just uh, output a certain part of the video just for, you know, testing or something. Uh, you can do that. If you double click it, it'll go away and then you're back to the entire video. There's no more range uh, limit. So yeah, left click and then right click. You can also um, do it from uh, up here. Like if I put the scrub bar there and do left part of the range and I put the scrub bar, oops, sorry, uh, click on the time, the scrub bar, and then click on the right, it'll put the right side of the range over here. And then there again, double click and it'll go away. All right, let's see. What else can I show you on this part? Okay, let's get into some of the effects. If uh, I go up to the effects bar and uh, there's uh, several effects that I can choose from. For example, if I look at this video and I want to change the brightness and contrast of this video, I select the video and then select the effect and then I can change it to brighter. You see how I can change the brightness on it 
change the contrast and they're going to can scrub scrub it till I get it to where I like it it's like wow that looks so good okay and so I'll kind of play around with it until I get it just the way I like it and then there it is okay now there's a few things that happened when I did that um, you see brightness showed up here and contrast showed up here on this little mini timeline and so um, what's going to happen is it's going to do this for the entire video so if I scroll across it's going to keep those same brightness and contrast settings now up here we have a thing called keyframe so I can add a keyframe at the current position okay and when I do it's going to add a keyframe for the one that's highlighted so contrast is highlighted currently so I have a keyframe for contrast if I highlight brightness and do a keyframe I also get a keyframe diamond on that one so if you can hit shift and have them both highlighted at the same time and that will give us you know that okay so at this point it's going to keep these settings for these keyframes if I move the scrub bar over and I add a keyframe here I can move the contrast and brightness to something else okay so let's just make it where you can you know see what it's doing we'll make it really obnoxious okay so that's obnoxious and that's what we're going to do i can use these to switch which keyframe i'm looking at so i switch to the first one and you see how that one looked okay switch to the second one and that's how that one looked ah okay and the way it works is, is the keyframe actually will slide from one to the other. So you see as it gets closer, it gets worse and worse till it gets to that ugly one. Okay, and then it'll stay that way for the rest of the video. Unless I put a keyframe out here, which I'll do that for both of them. Okay, maybe highlight both of them. And then uh, from there, I can, you know, switch to that one switch to that one see it hasn't changed yet but I can put them all back to you know 50% or close to it all right okay so there's there's that let's make sure they're set the way they are supposed to be okay so it looks somewhat normal okay so it starts out normal it goes wacky then it goes crazy again. So let's see what that looks like over time. Yeah. Why did the cookie come back? Because he felt crummy. Now, I know that's a dumb joke, but we told that joke to my daughter when she was little, and uh, she thought that was... So now you can see the more brightness more. and contrast has really she gone back to the way out. And then and she would just yell, it's going to hopefully come back to this other keyframe over and over again and so one day my wife asked her what okay so you get the idea with that so you can change uh some of these not all of them have these same keyframe uh ability to to adjust it over time but some of them do and uh, allows you to uh to change like for a clip you can change you know uh, a little curve there and you can actually play with the curve uh, there's a uh, different curves you can choose uh, so instead of being a linear it'll actually s slide in a different way so you can just play with those if you like um, the other thing is is um, you can set it to uh, be on on the uh, video itself so if we do I think it's this one no Anyway, sometimes the uh, the effects curve you can actually show it on the video, and then you can you know play with it down here. Which Adobe Premiere has them always on the uh, the video, so I don't know why uh, this one will make it. Uh... Oh, there it is. Okay, so now we can see it on the uh, the arranger. See, it? and then you can actually grab. See, we're grabbing this keyframe. And we can move it up and down, okay, left and right over here if we want to. And so you can do that. Um, 
and then find the other keyframe. That's picking the middle one, and there again we can change it around the way that we like uh, on the video itself instead of having to do it in this mini timeline, which sometimes can be a little irritating to do it up here, but uh, but that's that. Okay, and let's uh, delete all those because I don't like any of those. Um, Especially the, the ugly ones up there. So all back to default. There's probably a way to do it uh, all at once. But uh, anyway, so you can see all those effects have now uh, been removed. Anytime you add an effect, it's going to show up over here. And then when you do have an effect, you can do keyframes. There again, not all of them have uh, the keyframe ability to uh, adjust it over the time. But uh, a lot of them do. So you can change that change colors change you know different different aspects of uh, the video so that's kind of nice uh, another one that's kind of nice is um, the audios uh, if you look at there's audio effects click on that and sometimes you'll have uh, maybe where your volume you want to change it over time like there's a certain thing you want to like maybe where they yell or something you can you can just uh, right 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 before it make a keyframe during it have a keyframe and then after have a keyframe and then you can pull that middle one down so see for example if we uh, edit right here as soon as you well there we go add a keyframe and once you do that uh, then you get on the uh, the mini timeline you see the volume has been added and there again if you right click on this one oh, not right click left click on this one nope not left click uh but this one this one activates yeah on the timeline you can do it from here and so let's uh see if we can't move our scrub bar to the beginning create a keyframe move one in somewhere in the middle do a keyframe okay and then from here we can you know raise it move it here we can add a keyframe and lower it from here we can add a keyframe and raise it again there again you can do it from here either way all right and then when we play it it'll get Louder and quieter. Well, maybe you have to change it here too. I don't know. That's that seems kind of odd to me, but hey. All right. So as you click here, we've got the first keyframe. It's normal. Next keyframe. Let's make it really loud. Next keyframe, let's make it really soft. Next keyframe, we're going to make it loud again. And then next keyframe, we're going to make it normal. Okay, so here it should be almost loud. And then it's going to start fading out. And you can't hardly hear it. Maybe it's totally off. And then it starts getting loud again. So that's that's the idea there. All right, I think you can delete this entire effect and it'll take it all away. Yeah. Okay. So you can right click and delete the entire effect. So you can change aspects of the video with uh, keyframe ability, and you can change aspects of the audio with keyframe ability. Um, there's other ones here too that that are kind of nice. Uh, for example, uh, the size and position. Okay. So for example, let's. Uh, Let's do this. Uh, let's make uh, this video all the way out. And let's put this on the track right above it. Okay. And so right here we have, we should have the title with my face over it. So I'm not a lighthouse, but if we picked my position, picked uh, my character I guess and then do chroma key 
And with chroma key, uh, what it does is it's going to make uh, a certain color turn into an alpha channel. So like if I had a green screen behind me and I picked green, it would make that be an alpha channel. But unfortunately, I don't have green. And Or I could use blue. Blue is another one that's really good to do alpha channel with. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have blue either. So um, I have white, sort of. So you see when I clicked it, it barely shows through. Um, I can scroll down and get a couple of sliders that I could kind of mess with. The threshold is one. So see, I can kind of mess with the threshold. You see, it's not really white. It's kind of more of an almond color. So it's not really, um, and it's kind of a gradient. So it's not really doing a really good job of it. Uh, so with these two uh, sliders, you see one, it's it's almost so close to my face color, it's taking my face out too. So, so you try to do as best you can. So really, that's why you want to do a, a green color if you can, or a blue color that you can uh, take out. Um, there's of course other ones. If I do um, black, you see what happens with black. It takes my hat out. Um, so the other one is you can do is this one, which uh, you can choose a color. So you can choose a range, and the range is actually like a square. You can pick uh, like all that uh, to try to match. And you see it did something weird here. It turned me kind of black and white, and I don't know why it does that by default. But if you switch this one back, uh, it'll go back to saturated and instead of desaturated. So I don't know why it does that, but uh, it does. But you can kind of, again, play with the sliders until you get it looking quite just the way you like it. You never can get it quite just right with this gradient background. But uh, I don't know. That maybe looks pretty good, I guess. Um, you still see a little bit here and there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you never can quite get all of it. Uh, just try to get as much as you can. Uh, the best thing would be to get a better background that was uh, one solid color and uh, maybe green or blue is the best, maybe white. Uh, so try to do that. You can also do black, I guess, if you have a black background. Okay. Uh, you can do any color, really, if you do this, select the color, but it's, it's it's you know, whatever you take out, it's going to take out some of your colors. So, of course, you don't want to wear a green tie or a green shirt. Or, or depending on or blue shirt depending on what you're trying to uh, mask out okay so now you can see me and you can see the lighthouse title and you can see the lighthouse behind me uh, you can still see it has a little bit of background showing through but uh, that's kind of nice though it looks I mean doesn't it could be a lot better but that's that gives you an idea what you can do with chroma key um, the other thing is is you can do uh, the size and position uh, that one is kind of nice. So what you do again is you select the uh, video or clip that you want to uh, mess with. Click that effect. Uh, apply effect. And now you can change the size of it. So here I'm going to change the size to something smaller. And then I'm going to move it down into the lower right. So it's kind of like picture in picture a little bit. But uh, that has kind of made it where, you know, I'm I'm just like I can comment on the video while it's going. And of course, I'm not really because I'm talk. I have some other uh, thing I'm saying there, but uh, you know, telling a joke or whatever. But but uh, you get to see the uh, lighthouse uh, behind me while the video is playing. So that's kind of cool. Okay, and there again, I don't like the the you know air booming in the background. So I'll turn that audio completely off. And we'll play again. And that looks a lot better. The other thing you can do is you can play with the audio. So there is a audio effects that we talked about earlier. And see will be audio cleaning. And so with audio cleaning, you can do a denoiser. And it'll take out uh, various things. Uh, I think a uh, fan noise was what we're hearing there. But see, now it totally takes the volume out. So don't really like that so much. Um, let's see what else we got. Move humming. So maybe that's better. Okay, you can play with the equalizer. Uh, there again, you can decrease noise there. Uh, if you do that... Um, you'll want to take this one back off probably. So now you have just this. 
and I like to take a little bit of the base out also. So this is base, this is mid-range, this is treble. Okay. That sounds a whole lot better. You got compressor, you turn that on. What compressor does is if you have some kind of high, uh, uh, some loud volume, uh, it'll, it'll knock it down to where it kind of normalizes it a little bit. So maybe that's nice to have also. All right. And so we'll say OK on that. So now we've edited the audio and the video. And we'll see how that goes. All right. And there again, this background would look a whole lot better if it was a solid color. That's why maybe you need a green cloth or a blue cloth behind you or a white or a black or some solid color that you can easily take out that doesn't also take you out, such as black would take my hat out, or blue would take this corner out, red would probably take my shirt out. So green is always kind of nice, um, depending on what you, whatever color you, you use, don't wear that color, and that will let you do that. All right, and that pretty much sums up most of what you can do with uh, Movie Studio. All right, so now let's uh, export. I, I tell you what, let's set up a range first. Okay, so for the left side, we're going to pick all the way to the right. For the right side, we're going to just pick to here. Okay, so it's just going to export this part of the video. And we do File, and then Export Movie. And then you can pick AVI, or I like MPEG-4. And that's really good for uploading to YouTube. Okay. Give it a second. Maybe two seconds. Okay, I don't know what happened, so we'll try it again. All right, and there again, look at all the settings, 1080p, 29.97, 16.9. Um, here's the file that it's going to output to, and yes, ex export the selected range only. If you disk deconnected the, or dis deselected that, it would take away this range. You know, you would it wouldn't use that range. I mean, okay, and let's click OK. And while it's exporting, you can click this to uh, watch where it is on the export. So maybe that's kind of helpful. It does slow it down slightly, but I like doing it. Okay, and then once that's done, you should have a video then that you can look at. All right, so let's look at that. All right, so that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye.